Welcome to Slash Forward. Can you successfully inseminate someone with a turkey baster? Just something that's been on my mind. Anyway, we're going to take a look at the 2016 film Don't Breathe. Only subscribe to the channel if movies like this don't stress you out. Let's get to it. We open on a quiet blue collar neighborhood. As we wonder what they may be getting up to down there, we pan in slowly on a man dragging a woman down the street. So that question is now answered. We then transition to a very fancy doorknob and observe as a trio of sophisticated burglars waltz in and help themselves to many fine goods. They're very savvy, sticking to items that keep the potential felony rating fairly low in the event that they get caught. After making it out clean, they set the alarm off for good measure. And then they cruise the smooth, well-lit streets of Detroit, not a care in the world, excited about the possibility of stealing enough money's worth of goods to finally move on and out of there. Alex, however, is somewhat sad to hear of this plan, feeling some level of responsibility to stick things out there with his dad. When he gets home, we learn that the sophistication of their ingress is somewhat of a handicap, as Alex has access to a multitude of house keys due to his pops working for a security firm. Then we circle back to money who is not satisfied with the cash value of his score. His fence convinces him the way to go is to find a large cache of cash, so they don't have to worry about the exchange rate, and he provides a potentially hot lead. He makes the pitch when they all meet up. There's a loner vet in an isolated part of town. Some rich girl killed his daughter in a car accident, got off free, and then her family settled with him for an undisclosed sum. And as we all know, these settlements are usually paid out in large bricks of cash. Alex, always thinking of the consequences, wants to stick to petty larceny to avoid jail time. But... If we do this right, we never have to do it again. Distracting us as we ponder, then why don't criminals always do just the one job? Alex burns a flame for Rocky, so when she starts pressing him via text, he digs in to do some research, ensuring he creates a fairly substantial electronic trail to investigate later. And as he's busy with this, we get a little insight into Rocky's home life. It's pretty bleak. She desperately wants to get out of there with her little sister. So good news, she now has something to look forward to. With that settled, they begin their reconnaissance, trying to determine the comings and goings of the house. Back in the car, we learn a little more about Rocky's abusive childhood and her attachment to ladybugs as a symbol of providence. Alex, wrapped up in the romance of the moment, decides he would come with them if they managed to pull this off, despite the fact that Rocky and Money are already involved in a relationship. We then learn that there's been no movement at the house for five days, and no one else occupying any house houses for four blocks in any direction, so they decide to go in whether he's there or not. When they get a little welcome buff from a doggy, we learn that he's also blind, so even better for them. They prepare to breach that very evening. They roll up hard and toss a tasty treat over the fence to help the dog take a long, restful nap. Then they examine the exterior, finding Alex's keys to be essentially worthless, as there are four locks on the front door. They head to a side door where Alex tries to kill the alarm, but they're not in line of sight. The storm cellar is bolted from the inside, so Rocky opts to shimmy into the one small window that doesn't have bars on it. As soon as she trips the sensor, she has 30 seconds to find the alarm control to turn it off, and she just barely manages it. Then she lets in the boys, and they all respectfully remove their shoes before they begin rooting around someone else's belongings. As they do this, Money heads upstairs to mix a little sleepy concoction to make sure the homeowner remains calm and subdued. But he glances up to see him alert, creating some momentary anxiety. When it's confirmed he's just going for the TV, Money pops the bottle to fog the room and heads back downstairs, confident now they can let loose a little. And this works to their benefit because there's a room with a substantial lock on it, indicating there may be something valuable held therein, and it takes some significant effort to break it loose. Money decides the best way to solve this problem is via GAT, which is what he always thinks. Since this ramps up the legal stakes significantly, Alex decides that he's out. It hesitates momentarily for Rocky, then is fully turned off at the ludicrous idea that one can suppress a handgun with a water bottle. Loud or not, it works to remove the lock, and they're pretty jazzed about it until they notice the man standing in the doorway. Money thinks quick and tries to play it like his presence is just the honest mistake of a wayward partier, too drunk to realize he's in the wrong house. But the man feels out the disassembled lock with his tootsie, so Money tries to control the situation, but this grizzled vet can hear the quiver in his voice and decides to test his metal by walking straight at him. When Money hesitates to actually use his favorite problem solver, he's easily overpowered and told teasingly to stop shooting himself. And then the body hits the floor. As he pounds the wall in frustration, Rocky slides back into a closet. Alex then wanders in to see what all the fuss is about and finds himself lucky that the man's ears are still ringing from the gunshot. He's on the hunt, finding clues that allow him to follow the intruder's path so he can re-secure his home, making them all safe and sound. 
Alex is lucky enough to wind up in the bathroom because he's likely straight pissing himself right now, and he and Rocky confirm each other's whereabouts via text. And then, a bit of luck, the man accesses a secret safe in the closet Rocky occupies, and she peeps the code. So when Alex makes his way to the closet, Rocky immediately shushes him so she doesn't forget the code, and then starts casually packing away the cash. With the basement door now open, Alex suggests they exit through the storm cellar, which is bolted from the inside and is likely the easiest pathway out. But when they make for the door, he comes out of it, forcing them to freeze in place and watch as he begins the process of packing up and disposing of their friend. And then Alex steps on a squeaky floorboard, forcing them to freeze and wait to see if either of them are going to get shot. But the phone breaks the showdown and he curses his jumpiness and continues with his job. As he goes about his business, he catches a whiff of something that he kind of likes and ends up discovering a second pair of shoes. His worst fears are confirmed when he checks the safe and finds it empty. Downstairs, they have some trouble finding the door as the labyrinthine cellar is more expansive than they had anticipated. And then they're confronted with a different kind of problem. Turns out the young lady who killed his daughter has been imprisoned in some sort of a revenge scenario. But before they can decide what to do about it, they hear him come running due to his rudimentary alarm system. She urgently points to another safe, which utilizes the same code, allowing them to release her before they head for the cellar door. They discover that they had been naive to assume there wouldn't be another lock, but this time they have a key ring. Unfortunately, he remains one step ahead, appearing from the outside and taking some wild shots into the dark, nicking Alex's ear and hitting Rocky's phone. In the aftermath, we see his hostage took a round of the face. He finds her in a pool of blood and has a bafflingly emotive, mournful response to the discovery. Who knew he would be such a softie? He then jams the padlock prompting Alex to recommend they try the front door with their new key ring. But once they take to running, he just hits the lights, plunging them into total darkness, Buffalo Bill style. He continues to take pot shots at them as they wander in the darkness, and Rocky very nearly delivers herself to him. However, he takes off in the direction of a noise Alex made and gets the drop on him. He's saved only by the lack of bullets left in the gun. Alex manages to topple a shelving unit on him, and then they find light. After emerging from the basement and jamming the door closed, they're robbed of their celebration by the hulking shadow of the dog. Alex Alex manages to keep him calm as Rocky attempts the keys, but then the door gets slammed, forcing them to run up and barricade themselves inside an upstairs bedroom. Alex holds the door as Rocky escapes into the ducts, and then the dog helps Alex break through the window. He takes a little breather there as the man examines the space below, trying to ascertain his position. The dog then enters the wall space to pursue Rocky, forcing her to take a nosedive into an unknown area. Meanwhile, Alex wakes up and then finds himself back inside the house, where he tries to tuck himself away as the man listens intently. He can't help but let out a little whimper, giving the man a signal to follow. He comes in and gets hammered by Alex, who then also gets a momentary advantage when the dryer turns on. Unfortunately, he's unable to capitalize on this and ends up taking a pair of shears to the gut. Rocky then wakes up inside a wall somewhere and finds a potential pathway out, but the process of escaping proves to be too noisy, and she gets dragged back into the house where the man pounces on her and chokes her unconscious. She wakes up in a familiar harness and pleads for her release, claiming to understand what he's going through and making a presumptuous claim. None of this is going to bring your daughter back. Haha, <laughs> but that's where you're wrong, you see. They interrupted him when he was engaged in enacting the perfect plan. Since Cindy had taken his little girl away, he was baking a replacement in her oven. So don't feel too sorry for him. We see briefly that the wrong body got sheared. Who? What are you, blind? While downstairs, Cindy is disposed of, and then the harness gets cinched up, putting Rocky in a somewhat awkward position. He gets uncomfortably close with a pair of scissors, and then moves in on her whilst brandishing a turkey baster. Right as our faces reach maximum contortion, we're relieved to see a smattering of blood on Rocky's face, as Alex arrives just in time to bludgeon him with a hammer. They get him cuffed, give him the boots, grab the money, and hit the front door. Unfortunately, Alex pops a leak from what? Aw, oh, this asshole again? Rocky heads to open water and chides him in a bit of an ableist manner. You're worthless out here. So he lets the dog out. She makes it to her car, but is relieved of her backpack on the way in. This can't be for nothing, so she fashions a little trap. By strapping the trunk latch, she's able to goad him to enter and then pull and push at the same time, locking him in the trunk. Only momentarily, however, as he never quits, so she hooks him to himself and then rolls out of the car. But all this gave old dude time to catch up, bringing us back to our opening scene. As she's tossed on the floor like a sack of potatoes, we all give up on the inside. But then, an omen, leading her to the panic switch. The loud noise puts him into a state of confusion, giving her the chance to rock him with the crowbar, until she finally levels him and causes him to take a round of the armpit when he falls into the cellar. Then she runs right as the police arrive as a result of the alarm system going off, and she prepares to leave with her sister, we learn via the news that he survived the ordeal, and that she's likely home free as the police have identified this as a foiled home invasion involving only two individuals. 
I have a website set up where you can support the channel through donations or merch. And I'd like to take a moment to give a huge thanks to my donors memorialized in the Hall of Headshots. Well, that was pretty crazy. I think this one really straddled the line well. Tons of suspense, plenty of payoff, and it threatened us with some pretty nasty stuff without actually making us go through it. My hat's off to you, movie. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to become a part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.